Hello everyone, welcome to another video in the Cloud Parts of a series on Amazon Web Services. Today, we would be looking at uh, Active Directory services in AWS. So, let's get started. In order to go to the Active Directory services or Active Directory on AWS, I need to go to Directory services. Once I go to Directory services, we should not be having any directory so i could set up my first directory by using this we would go with amazon managed microsoft ad and i will go with the standard edition make sure that there are some costs associated with this setup i i need to give the fqdn of my directory so i will give it as cloud .in. And it is asking me a net buyer's name, so I will say CP. And uh, description, uh, I'll leave it as optional. I will give a strong password. So that would be something of this sort. And I'll go to the next page. Uh, here we would have to select the VPC in which we are doing the setup. I'll select the VPC CPT00 VPC1. I'll uh, use this existing subnets that are already there. So I have selected subnets and we would go into setting up the active directory. So please bear in mind that uh, there is some cost associated with setting up this active directory with uh, a 30 day limited trial we have some errors uh, let's try to see what the problem is so let's let's go to that information main so let's try and see if that works creating a type of services and as you see we are now created start as you see it takes at least between 20 to 45 minutes for the echo battery to be set up so we basically would have to wait for the directory services to come up. So as we see, uh, the active directory service is now active. Now let's try to connect it with an ECD instance. In the meantime, I would also show you the details that we get in the active directory services. Uh, these are the two DNS servers of our active directory. It is in the subnet uh, that we have and it is hosted in the VPC that we have and across two subnets. So I'll quickly go ahead and create a EC2 instance. For this, we would be creating a Windows EC2 instance. So I'll type on Windows. Uh, I'll select the 2019 case. To make things faster, I would be selecting T2 medium. We would be selecting this VPC and the subnet. Uh, because the subnet has a uh, public IP enabled on it. Uh, I'll quickly provision the servers. I would say uh, CPP00. This is Windows Utils SRP. Utils is nothing but a utility server. Uh, another name for a utility server. We will be creating the RDP public security group and we would be selecting our time key to create it. Now once the instance is created, uh, we do have to wait for at least 4 minutes for uh, the password encryption to work. As you see, uh, this is still trying to connect but could not be able to connect to the ECP instance. And because this is still in the pending state, uh, once this comes into the running state and the status check says uh, initializing, we should be able to connect to the EC2 instance. As you see, it's now prompted us for the username and password key. I have to punch in the username. The default username on a Windows uh, server is administrator, but I still would not be able to decrypt the password because uh, uh, we are not completed those four minutes, but uh, it's worth giving it a try. Still not able to decrypt the password, so we probably wait for another minute or so. As you see, now it's now uh, allowing us to decrypt the password, so I quickly select the 10 
key and decrypt the password. Now that the password has been decrypted, we will paste it here and try to connect to the server. I would be accepting the CA certificates. Once the certificates are accepted, I should be logging into the server. So as you guys see, this is uh, the server prompt. I would go to server manager. Inside the server manager, we go to the dashboard and here we have add tools and features. Uh, server manager does take a minute to gather all the information. I would be going into the server rules directly and once I receive or go into the server rules I should be able to find active active services there and which we should be enabling on this server. So that is active directory domain services at the feature and we click on next 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 and install the service and once the active directory services feature has been enabled we should be able to open the active directory console and that is uh, also called as dsc.msc and let's uh, see once that is completed so as you see the installation is happening what we could also do is uh, close this prompt and uh, this will not affect the uh, feature installation but we would prefer to have this open so that we can get a clear view and then the installation completes. So the installation is almost all done. Since all this is that the installation has completed on the server, let's go to the Windows administrative tools and uh, open active directory users and computers. Now uh, to manage these, we need to join this uh, EC2 instance into the domain. So let's first do that. For this I go to uh, the best known place, so go to the properties and uh, here we change the word group. I change this and I call it as CPP00, uh, utility, utility. And I give the domain. The domain would be cloud. And it would ask me for the domain credentials. Now, if you see, this is not able to recognize the domain. So we quickly have to go and check what the domain name is. It is cloudpartshala.in, but the reason it's not able to configure the DNS is because the DNS servers have not been configured on the server. In order to configure the DNS servers, we would go to the run command and uh, punch in ncpa.cpl. This should open as the network interface uh, properties. Uh, I would go to IPv4 and click on properties. Here I should be having the DNS entry. So I'll, I'll, I'll put in the first DNS entry, which is uh, 172. I'll also put the second DNS entry which is uh, 10.1.5 Click on OK, close And now if I try to do this, I should be prompted for admin credentials I'll punch in the administrator And I would create, give the password that we use when we were creating the active directory services I'll click on OK, so this should register this EC2 instance into the domain .in, and uh, we should be able to view the confirmation very soon. As I'm looking at the username and password is correct, so let's also see. I also give a utils at the end. As you see, we were able to connect to the domain and I will close this. This would definitely need a restart of the server. 
and uh, the fun fact is if an instance is restarted from within the uh, within the operating system there is no change in the public DNS so I could still connect to the same server using the same DNS entry and this should allow me to connect you could also check uh, the screenshot of the server uh, to understand when the server comes up Yeah, so as you see the system is now booting up and we have the windows from so very soon we should be able to connect to the server now that we have connected the server to the domain i could either connect from the domain itself the domain credentials itself so i uh, could choose uh, min and the password that we created uh, now that I'm connected inside the server with the domain credentials, I could now also open the Active Directory Services, which is uh, the connector, which should be available for us in the administrator tool. So I'll go to Active Directory Users and Computers, and uh, here, uh, if you see, CloudPartsala.in is already there, and the Panic. Now let's quickly create another EC2 instance of Windows and uh, I will show you how to connect to this by using the domain credentials, uh, how to add it to the domain and how to connect it to the, the domain credentials. I'll quickly configure this. Uh, we will be selecting 1A and the tags as main ttp 0 windows domain test and this tidy up the name there security group we will be selecting the existing security group that is not a public launch the instance uh, i would be selecting this tag and we should be able to come into this region on the server now as you see uh, we should already have the ip address so i will definitely start trying to connect to the IP address but we still have to wait for those 4 minutes uh, for the entire system to come up in the meantime uh, let's all let's go to our system and uh, if you see cpn is where the users and the computers would be added the admin is the default user that has been there so let's create a new user i'll say I'll give the name as uh, cp uh, it's hyphen d00 cp d00 user one so this is the user that I would be using so this is how we would connect in and uh, for a password I give a default password that I generally use click on finish so as you see that the user has now been created if you look at the computers uh, you would only have one computer at the moment which is uh, the one on which we are already logged in so now let's try to see if we are able to see the second one up and running let's try to decrypt the password it still needs some time to connect so we would be so let's explore uh, the domain controller so uh, as you see this is our uh, domain controller and if you go to properties uh, this is the domain name cp hyphen in is the short name that we could provide when connecting to the domain uh, these are the users uh, we could keep on adding more more and more users uh, we could also create service accounts on, into this uh, stuff but uh, as of now uh, this is what we have so uh, we definitely are missing groups so you could also create groups in the so you could you could what you could create is a new folder here a 
can call it group and if you click a uh, folder called group I can create it and could just remove it to get a PC I could create a group called as admins so okay, that's called as admins or I would call it CP D admins and this would be a global group right uh, so I could go to the properties and uh, I could give this group some uh, I could add members to this group and so on and so forth now this group would by default not have any permissions so what we would have to do is uh, create a windows password so let's let's go quickly go back to the new server and log into this and uh, let's connect to the second ec2 instance so quickly it's already asking me for the stuff i will set a different user because we are still because we are still connecting with uh, the local credentials so i would select this and accept the certificate and this should allow me to log into the server now uh, once that i am into the server i quickly add the server to the domain now this is already up and running uh, i'm waiting for the windows explorer to come up we go to we go to the settings and we would now be adding this to the domain so we go to change settings change i'll give this computer name windows 2 i'll select the domain and i'll say cp hyphen m this should allow me to go to the domain This is the same reason why we are not able to connect. So we need to go to mcpo.cpl and uh, select the credential or change the DNS settings on the server. So I would be I would be getting the DNS again. DNS entries again, so that is 10.1.0.72. Uh, the other one is uh, 10.1.1.5. Now that both the settings have been added, I would quickly add this uh, to the domain. Uh, now here what we could definitely do is uh, provide the admin credentials and the password that we have and this should allow us to add this server to the domain now uh, i'm waiting for the prompt uh, to see that the server was successfully added to the domain and uh, once that is completed we should be able to find this server ctb 2 on the active directory in the computer so if i take you to the computer's uh, page uh, if i go to devices and if you refresh this page i should be able to see the second computer already added to the system and i should also be getting a prompt that this has been successfully added and let's close this before i close this uh, i'll also quickly show you i'll also quickly show you how to add uh, domain users uh, to access uh, the servers so what we could do definitely is go to groups uh, inside group i have a bunch of uh, users i will go to remote desktop users and i'll click on add uh, since i'm already into this domain so all i have to do is ctb00 admins and it would check for the group uh, it would ask me for the credentials i'll give the admin credentials that i have and 
by this i should be able to add the group into the remote desktop users now that this is added we could restart the server and log in with the admin credentials uh, or with any domain user into the system so let's see how we create a domain user so this is the user that we already have so what i'll do is uh, go to properties and add this user to cpd 0 admins cpd 0 admins uh, i'll do a check name and this should auto fill it now that we have already come inside this so now let's also go back to our system get the password get the username and get the ip address and then connect to the system at this time i would be using uh, the username which is a cpd user one to log into the server I'm waiting for the server to be able to connect Since we have restarted the server, so this might take a fraction of seconds extra to give us the login form. I will provide the username and the password and let's see if I am able to connect to the server. You will try to the password to log in, but I can be able to the password as I the administrator. And this happens because uh, this is uh, set to change my password with the next lockdown so I will change this setting and I'll uncheck this box so that the password is uh, we are not asked to change the password every time. So I'll quickly do this CP in CP I would now do this and I should now be able to log into the so so as you see, I'm already logged into the server with the admin credentials using uh, Active Directory services. So the user that we have is already inside this Active Directory services. Now we could also reset the password of this user from here. So let's let's try that user one. I'll I'll provide a new password. Let's see if I'm able to reset the password for the user. It says that the password was re uh, reset successfully. Let's refresh this and let's go to properties and see if uh, this is asking. Okay, there is. It's not asking us to change the password of the next platform. So what I'll do is uh, elegantly log off from the server, log back in with the new password. So this is the same IP address that we are trying to connect. That is the same. I'll enter the password and uh, yeah, I'm able to connect to the instance with the new is new users password. So this is how we could manage Active Directory services. We could reset the user's password using this console as well. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, I hope you like. The content please like and share the video so that it reaches to many people who are looking for solutions like these please subscribe to the channel if you have not done it thank you so much for watching keep having a great time